demonstrating the application of our ProWall system in our ProRend training centre. We are indoors in the training centre. Uh, we appreciate the system is usually applied to the outside of timber frames or steel frame structures. But obviously today we're going to be working with a wall which is on the inside of our training centre. So today we're going to be running through the application of our pro wall system on a timber frame. Now before you start, the thing to look out for is ensure that your uprights of the frame are clearly marked on the breather membrane. They should be either at 600 or 400 centres. Before we start the battening process, we must fit the ancillary items such as the pro wall vent bead. Now this is a 25mm vent bead. The vent beads have an upstand at the back which fixes directly to the sheathing. When fitting the vent bead, if possible, ensure the breather membrane is lapped over the face of the upstand of the bead. This ensures any water is directed down over the breather membrane and straight down through the ventilation hose. It is vitally important to ensure that your ventilation bead is level. Ensure that you screw into the upstand with a stainless steel fixing. Now the most important thing before you even install the battens is to check that the frame is level. Commonly what can happen with timber frames, particularly at the floor cassette or rim beam level, is that the front section can come out further than the bottom between the ground and the first floors and so on. In order to ensure the frame's level we use a spirit level. If the frame is out for any reason then we will have to consider bringing the battens out to suit the frame. In order to do that we will use a fit for purpose packing sheet. Ensure the packing shim is inserted where the batten would be and enough packing shims to ensure that the batten is level. Now if we look at the battens within the system, what's required is a 25mm by 75mm wide timber batten. Now the reason why we have it that wide is because there needs to be a 3mm gap between the vertical joints within the system to allow for additional movement. If we use a thinner batten then the screws may be going in at an angle which can compromise the integrity of the system under wind load. So the fixing centres of the battens should be 300. The fixings should be made of stainless steel and they should embed into the timber frame by 60 millimetres. The centres of the battens should be 600 maximum. Now the most important thing when installing the ProWall system is your adequate DPC and waterproofing in and around the window apertures. Now what we do is we frame the window aperture completely with damp proof corsing. Ideally this needs to be done before the windows are installed. So for a standard 140 frame you can use a 225mm DPC. You start on the inside of the window head, bring the DPC out over the top 
of the head, flap it back over. Repeat this process all the way round, ensuring any overlaps are 100mm with your DPC, so your window frame is completely covered. Once this process has been done, this is, this is when you install the framing batten all the way around the window aperture. Now we do this for fire and we also do it as a fixing point for the boards to the system. Once this has been done, we use an additional piece of flashing tape or DPC to create a tray over the head batten. Now this ensures that any condensation within the frame runs down, hits that tray and comes out down to the vent bead. There's also a 50mm gap left between the battens to ensure cross ventilation within the system. Now this happens also below the seal batten. There is also a, an additional piece of flashing tape or DPC which goes over the seal batten in underneath the window frame and it can be turned up at the end prior to installing the seal on the opposite side. Now once the battens have been fitted and the vent bead has been fitted, it's time now to install the Pro Wall base bead. Now the Pro Wall base bead is one singular unit which houses the Pro boards and also creates a drip detail on the bottom and on the front accommodating 6mm of base coat and top coat texture. At floor level, between the first and second floor stories, for fire regulations, a horizontal intermission fire strip must be installed. For our system, this is our FIS 25 fire brake. The fire brakes are a metre in length and they are installed directly to the sheathing at floor level. The intermission fire strip will expand to close a 25mm cavity. 50mm fire brakes are also available to close a 50mm cavity. When fitting the fire brakes, it's important to ensure that the label is at the front because this is where the expansion of the fire brake will occur. The fire brakes are fitted at 250mm maximum centres with a small stainless steel screw. So now we're going to talk about cutting the boards for the system. Now the thing to remember, or the magic number, is 150mm. Now we say that because the vertical joints within the system need to be 150mm at least in from the reveal. So you have a cut 150 in that way, minimum, and also 150 up from the sill detail. So that ensures that there is no straight joints within the system running in line with the reveal or also in line with the sill detail. Now we do that for strength. Opening and closing of the windows, you're going to get a weak point if it's in line with the sill or in line with the reveal detail. So we're looking for a minimum of 150mm L shape. When cutting the boards, ensure that you are in a well ventilated area. It's important that all the correct PPE is worn at all times during the cutting process.
we recommend cutting the boards with an angle grinder and a masonry blade. When offering the board up to the frame, ensure the pro board sits firmly in the base bead. Use a 3mm packing shim on the vertical joints of the system to ensure a gap is left for additional movement. Use a pencil to mark vertical lines on the face of the board in line with the battens behind. Create the markings for the fixings on the boards. They should be 200 centers. A full board should have 35 fixings per sheet. The SH3 timber frame fixings have a Torx fitting. You will need a 25mm Torx piece in order to fit the screws into the system. You can use the SH3 timber frame fixings as the 3mm gap spacer on the horizontal joints. With assistance, lift the boards over the screws and put in place. Once the boards are screwed, remove the 3 mil screws up in as the gap spacer on the horizontal joints. Be sure to follow British standards when choosing seals. They should protrude past the face of the render system by a minimum of 35mm and past the reveal line by 25mm. Fit the seals first before applying the boards to the reveals. At floor level, leave a 15mm gap in the system to allow for contraction in the ring beam. Our pro wall slip joint detail is affixed over the gap and rendered both sides. Fix the metal section of the slip joint with the SH3 timber frame screws. Leave a 10mm gap between the mesh and the metal sections of the bead for contraction provisions. Ensure to mitre cut the bead to suit the external corner. The fixing centres on the external corner of the system are reduced to 120mm. This is to add additional strength under wind loading. The noses mesh angle beads are fitted to the underside of the slip joint detail, ensuring sufficient drip is left and fitted above the slip joint detail in line with the mesh part. This mock-up demonstrates the range of motion in the slip joint detail. Now we're ready to apply the ProRend light base coat. Using 7 litres of clean water, pour the base coat into a mixing bucket and mix with a mixing drill. You should get 4.5 square metres per bag at 5 millimetres. Apply the pro in light base coat to the external corners to stick the Moses mesh angle beads. Pro wall window protection bead can be used in place of a standard stop bead. 
It has a self-adhesive compu-band section that affixes to the window frame, creating a watertight seal. And a removable upstand at the front, which protects the window during the rendering process. The Colortex uniform comes in a vast range of colours, up to 65,000 in fact, and mixed in-house. Today we'll be using African Grey. This was part one, applying Pro War rendered rain screen, covering batten and the correct fitting of Pro Board and Pro Bead. In part two of applying Pro War rendered rain screen, we will apply Pro Ren light base coat with embedded Pro Mesh, Pro Ren Colortex Primer and Top Coat. This will give a durable and highly water resistant finish and complete the installation of the Pro Wash system.